I think it's live and kicking now. Um, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another live stream here from Nordic Anglers. Uh, I'm Daniel, as always, or not always, but at least <laughs> I am Daniel still. <laughs> um, and uh, today we're going to tie two great flies, two flies that I think are important to uh, to you know any any uh, box uh, that's that's used for for trout. Uh, the first one is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a streamer, and the second one is gonna be uh, and this is a small stickleback, and the second one is gonna be a parachute uh, mayfly done. So as always, it would be really really cool if uh, if you could let me know if the audio is working, if the video quality is is nice and performing. So uh, and also state please state where you're from and um, and how you uh, how you found this uh, this live stream. So. So uh, please let me know out in the commentary if uh, if you can see and hear me. <laughs> right now it's it's very uh, yeah the silence in the chat is is very loud. So <laughs> I hope someone is out there. I see that at least twenty seven people are watching. So somebody must be out there at least. <laughs> Okay, there is a still well. The 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 time is it's all good. Oh, thank you, Mathi Matthias, or Matthias, if if we're doing Danish. So uh, thank you a lot. I'm just gonna swap camera here. As I said, today we're gonna tie two different flies. Um, the first one is is uh, is is what I think is a really really nice way of tying a stickleback. A stickleback is is probably one of the most common bait fish. Uh, I think it's it's distributed all around the world. So. So um, you can fish both in. Uh, you can fish this wherever you are, and basically this this type of uh, this type of bay fish is is really really good. It's 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 fairly simple uh, in regards to the material used, but um, but you can variate this in in an enormous amount of ways and an enormous amount of of colors. So you can you can do a goby. You can do a small. Uh, uh, a small sardine. You can do a lot of different things with with this type of pattern. Um, uh, what what really characteris uh, the characteristics of of this pattern is it's 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 fairly easy to tie, but it's it's not as easy to get uh, really really good. Um, and then also it's uh, it 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 has a lot of movement. It swims really really well. And this fly has produced for me all over. I've I used this a lot in Iceland to fish for for big brown trout's in in lakes and streams, uh, but also the sea trout's are. It's it's very good for sea trout. It's good for rainbows uh, and and all that stuff. So, uh, so it's a it's it's a really really nice pattern. I I ran out of beer, so today I have to drink some of yeah product placement. You know, <laughs> no, no, not at all. I just th this was this was the only thing I had. So. I think that basically we should just get on and start tying. Yeah, I am happy, you know. I am happy. Everything is good. Well, um, uh, despite the, the pretty harsh, or harsh in Danish terms at least, uh, weather conditions here in Denmark with a lot of snow, uh, comparatively a lot of snow compared to what we're used to in Denmark, uh, so so the, there's not much much fishing, but there is a lot of fly tying and and you know fly tying is nice. So so I I get some of that done. Um, also I've been doing a lot of videos that's gonna be uh, aired on on YouTube soon. Some some pretty pretty cool projects. Just finished a really big one about all the different fly tying tools that is out there and and stuff like that. So basically, let's swap the cameras here. And uh, and as always, it's it's nice to see where everyone is from. So so if if from Fyn and from Himalayan, it could also be fun to see just the countries. And if if you you wouldn't mind just uh, telling me what countries you're from, because then I would also get a pretty good estimate of uh, of of how many Danish people are actually watching this. Because if it's <laughs> you know five different guys. Um, uh, from outside Denmark watching, then perhaps I should uh, <laughs> consider making these, well, at least uh, make more in, in Danish. So, so please, please let me know. I see at least the fourth first ones are, hello Heidi, and Jesper as well, and Mikhail of course. 
Um, yeah, a lot of people from Denmark. I kind of thought that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's start tying here. So the first thing we need is, of course, a tying thread. I'm gonna use a black one for this one because the the overall color scheme is is black. And uh, and you can do this unweighted if if you're fishing a, a, a sinking line or or a intermediate line. But for um, if if you're fishing a floating line, then I would suggest that you use. I need, just need to find a good scissor. There was one. Uh, I I would uh, I would add a bit of uh, a bit of weight to this so I have some lead free wire here because in Denmark we're not allowed to use lead and and basically I just add a small amount of this to to the body to give the fly a bit more weight so it cuts better through the Icelandic air um, if we ever get to go there again but also just to give it a bit more weight so it so it sinks a bit faster so you can you can fish this as fast as I prefer to fish a bait fish like this. Because normally when I when I fish a bait fish like this for sea trout, uh, I I have the rod under the arm and then use the du the double handed uh, uh, retrieve in order to give it really really a lot of speed and then with a lot of stops in between. So I see some from Germany, Dundee, Scotland as well, in U.S. and Tilst. <laughs> hello, Eric as well, <laughs> and and hello to everyone out there, other also. Um, it's it's so nice to see all of you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so now I've added a small amount of uh, of non-lead wire, and now we need to start tying the fly. But the 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 best thing to do here is basically to do kind of add a lot of tying thread so you have a solid a, a solid um, a solid base for uh, for the rest of. Actually, I think we're gonna do this one the right way, the 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 really really right way. So I'm gonna take some dubbing, and you can use any dubbing here. Just gonna use whatever I just had laying around. This is some grayish one. Depending on what color dubbing you're gonna use for this, because um, you'll have a different looking uh, bait fish. Because uh, basically, what I'm gonna do with this dubbing is just to fill out, to fill out the body here on this one, so that it's it's it 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 is it has been stuffed with something. Just to to make sure that uh, the fish, the teeth of the fish, does not as easily uh, rip out the the fibers. So just you know whatever you have is is fine for this. This was just some yeah, some gray. I think this is actually just some um, some semi seal dubbing. I think, but basically just anything will do. And it's 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 mainly just to keep uh, to keep your body filled. And, and then I'm going to do a whip finish here. And as I said, I have a pretty big uh, layer of thread on the, on the hook here, a big bundle of thread. Because if I have that, then it's easier for me to fasten the, uh, to fasten the uh, minnow body. Uh, minnow body is, is kind of like a mylar tubing thing. Uh, but, but the minnow body has some... Uh, has some really really nice markings. It has these interwoven in between are these different colors. Uh, they come in blue and in red and in in copper and in gold and and it's just a really really nice uh, material for this. But I'm gonna use the pearl purple uh, not purple the pearl and black one for for this one. I use this a lot uh, also for some. Uh, some pretty cool bodies on, for instance, uh, sunray shadow like this. I was messing around with, uh, and and it's just it's it's really cool for salmon flies as well. Uh, but for these uh, these uh, baitfish patterns, it's really really good. You have not missed anything yet, Lucas. I think, Freikshaun, Fyn, Norjylland, Norfyn, Sjælland, Colorado. Well, well, we're getting around. I think. Let me just see if. And there, I think it's even sharper now. Okay, so I take this mylar, and uh, there is some stuffing inside there. Just take that, pull that out, and throw it away. But then we add this on top of the uh, on top of the hook here. Basically, it's 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 hollow now, as you can see. So you can just you can just place it above the the dubbing here. And just pull it a bit out. Then you take your tying thread and you make a loop, 
and then you pull on with both your hands. Now I just need to make sure that there is there is where it should be. And then you 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 tie this down. And as soon as you have some leverage here, just apply a lot of pressure. There we go. To completely secure it. So now we have the tail as well, because we can basically just un unwind or un I don't know if it's uncoil or or basically you just you just pull the the woven fiber here uh, free of itself and then it it creates this fluffy tail here and uh, I think the size of this is is what I want now but uh, we can always make sure that you have maybe this and make it a bit a bit larger than what you think because you can always trim this down later later on um, and there we go and now I'm in the market for some sunker. And uh, you can tie this with a lot of different uh, sunker materials. You can use uh, you can use rabbit. Um, it's it's a bit laggy. You can use uh, black uh, rabbit, you can use uh, a pine squirrel. If if you're tying in smaller sizes then these sunker pine squirrel uh, things are really really awesome it all depends on the on the length of the uh, of the hairs compared to the to the length of the hook on, on the size of the fly so for instance if you want to tie smaller flies then the pine squirrel is is absolutely awesome if you want to tie larger flies then perhaps some uh, some bism or some uh, or some uh, or, or some rabbit and for the really really long ones you can use uh, opossum and and uh, and stuff like uh, like that, so so it all depends on the different uh, types of of hairs. Uh, one of the things that I've been tr uh, wanting to do for a long time is a very thorough uh, walkthrough of all the different types of uh, of hairs and sunken materials and what they can be used for. Is that something you think would could be a good idea? You know, to talk about Arctic and polar bear and marble fox and goat and uh, pine squirrel and bism and uh, Tanuki and all those, those those different types of, of pairs and and you know do an in-depth video regarding exactly when you use what and uh, and and what the different uh, different types of hairs are, are good for um, I, I I was thinking about that but but uh, you know um, I don't know if there's actually uh, if that's actually something that 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 that, that is sought after a, a guide like that but basically gonna take one of these this is pre sungered so it's it's basically a yes Lucas I know some very good flies for Vado uh, go look up Tilda Astrid and Horsock and with those three you are pretty pretty uh, you, you're on you're on on, uh, on on a really really good way to to uh, to catch your salmon in Vado so basically, as I said, this is pre-sungered, so um, so it's it's easy to use. You can also buy a complete uh, complete skin and then and then cut your own sizes. But but for for this uh, these pre-sungered uh, pre-cut um, sunger strips here are are pretty nice. So what we want to do is is we want to as much as possible get this to taper. As you can see, it it um, it tapers already a little. So it, it when when it tapers, I mean that it's it's thicker up here and then gradually becomes thinner and thinner, and in order to help this this natural way of the of the of the sunker wing here, I'm gonna use my scissors and then very carefully cut. I don't know if if I can if I can show this properly. My scissor is curved. That's not ideal for this kind of work, but maybe it will work. Yeah. It's not completely perfect, but it will do. So you can see now it. I hope you can see that. Now you can you can see that it it tapers. It gets thinner and thinner towards the the tip towards the tip here. And that's what we want. And again, uh, you can do this as large as you want this fly.
<laughs> Hallo Lasse, LAU82. Ah! Larsen, er det dig? I don't know who that is, but uh, and I do not recall that particular uh, penalty kick, but you know. Yeah, for Carbo, uh, uh, then uh, then the the fly that's called the number nine and the uh, and the octopus Blixbroten or Neon is is two very very good flies. So now we're gonna, but otherwise, uh, Matthias. Feel free to send me an email regarding all of this and the same to you, Lucas. My email is daniel at Nordic Anglers. If you send me an email uh, with, with, with questions that need a bit more uh, uh, in-depth explanation, then, uh, then I'm, I, I will be happy to, to answer all those questions. So what I've done now is, is I want this tail to be about this length. So I parted. I parted the wing here with my scissor or your dubbing needle. And then I made sure that I don't have any hairs that is 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 gonna be uh, uh, gonna be caught inside my um, my tying thread. And then I make one careful turn. And if you if you put some saliva on your fingers, you can actually brush these hairs hairs forward, making it more easy not to trap any of the any of the hairs. Um, with your with your tying thread. <laughs> Hello Daniel Lawson. It's been a long time since we've we've seen last. So there we go. That looks nice and sharp I think. And uh, and then I'm gonna do a whip finish here. If you really want to make this really, really uh, a lot more strong and durable, you can have a you can you can take the tying thread and then move it all up along the uh, up along the the hook here to to kind of use it as a rip. But if you just do this right and you have um, and you have a, a GSP thread or something of, of that sort, then this this will be sufficient for for having this fly last uh, for many 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 fish. So of course now, um, since this part here is is partly exposed, it's it's important. I'm gonna tilt it so you can you can easily see. I'm gonna tilt it and then I'm gonna apply a small amount of sabagat, just a wee amount of sabagat here. And if you just place some on the side or on or underneath, it will it will move along and and it will make sure that your fly is. Is, is strong uh, and durable and will last to several uh, several fish which I think is is one of the did it get out of are the image still sharp yeah cheers everyone cheers oh now I'm gonna fold this back here and then I'm gonna take all of this um, this mylar tubing here. I'm gonna make sure that it's really, really firmly firm and nice. I'm gonna take my tying thread, and for this part, I actually, because I have my um, my hand holding this in place, I take my tying thread. And I place it between my teeth in order to make sure. Oh, I need to see all oh, the eyes all the way up there. So to secure it right behind the eye and making sure it's nice and tight, I just uh, used my <laughs> my teeth to to keep it in keep it in check. There we go. So as you can as you can see. Now we have a nice kind of like a a bit of candy, a bit of caramel, or or I don't know what what that kind of candy is called, but something like that. You know, you have this bonbon in between here, and uh, and you have this all the way up uh, near the eye. Then I'm gonna unwind and uh, untangle all of this uh, mylar here, and for this I used a, a a piece of mylar that was way way too big. Of course, if when you tie this, make sure that you do because all of this is going to be wasted. So you could probably have made two flies with uh, 
almost two flies with the with the piece that I had here. So make sure you don't waste as much material as, as I do. Or don't, you know. <laughs> if you don't, you'll run out sooner and... Um, well, to be frank, I don't know who that will benefit, but I have I have a guess. <laughs> but yeah, if if take care not to waste too much materials. I mean, this is after all some some sort of flesh plastic material, and we we do not want too much of that around. I'm gonna cut away everything I can as close to the eye as possible, and when you do that, it's important that you are really really confident that you have tied your materials very nice and smoothly down and everything is firmly firmly uh, fastened because if it isn't and you cut this away then basically what happens is this um, this will un unwind and uncoil and uh, when that happens you'll have to redo the fly so take care regarding that the next thing we're gonna use is um, is a hackle and you can use a black one, a black hen saddle, some uh, some loose mets feathers, or some red ones for the stickle bag is nice. Um, I have this just absolutely amazing uh, whiting um, uh, black laced hen saddle, uh, hen cape here. That I mean, these feathers are just they are so so awesome. So I'm gonna use one of those because every time that I can, I use these black laced. Because the feathers are just, they're just marbles. See a feather like this? It's its just, it's just cool. <laughs> Lucas, um, I just used the, the white GSP, um, the, the white Vibus uh, GSP uh, 50 Dinya. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the tying thread that I use the most. And uh, and good luck with uh, with uh, with that fly. That is, that is a really really good fly. And uh, there is a reason why I named that fly after my wife. Um, it's the fly I like the most to fish with, and the fly I like the most to catch a salmon on. Uh, so so the estrid is is a, is a nice fly. So basically, what I did now is uh, I pulled all the fibers back here on the feather, and then I cut off the. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I don't normally do that, but I did that today. And then I'm going to tie down the feather here, all the way up here. There we go. And now, of course, is when I should have removed this. I, I'm, I'm doing this the wrong way, sorry. It's all this talking. What we need to do before we tie in the feather, of course, is, is to have this here. Fold the, uh, fold the Songer wing. All the way up here and uh, what you're aiming for is if you've done this right then you won't, won't be able to see a gap in your shunga wing where you where you tied uh, where you where, where you fastened it the first time so kind of like this I mean if you really really bent this you can see it but as long as it's just on top here you can't see it and and now we need to tie this down here so and in order to get the right tapering of, of this here then it's important that you do not do like this uh, and then tie down. You have to tie on top of all the hairs because otherwise you will get a very abrupt uh, you will get a very abrupt finish here and, and the tapering of the fly will not look correct. So make sure that you have the songer here um, and, uh, and that, you, that, you that you just hold everything in place and then you tie on top of all the hairs. So pull it as tight as you can like you did with the uh, like you did with the um, the mylar, and then tie on top of everything here. Use maybe six or seven turns, and then really, really pull on it. And now you can see you have some of these uh, hairs here that are sticking out that are very, very short. But this will make the fly uh, overall look better. It probably won't have that have that much of a difference out in the water. I don't think it will uh, in regards to the fish, but but if you look in your fly box, I know this from uh, at least that's 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 what I do. When I when I open my fly box to pick a fly, the first one I take is always the one that I believe the most in, and the one I believe the most in is the one that I think is the best one, uh, the the one that that is best tied. 
So if I have different different ones and, and some of them are mangled and 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 some of them are not as good as as I would like them to be, which can happen, you know, to anyone. And then of course uh, you you start with with the the one you think is the best, and then you move down as as soon as as one of those are, are worn out or or lost or or whatever. So just gonna have a quick peek here. Hmm. There we go. Back to back to the other camera. And uh, and now you can cut away the uh, the sunker here. And here it's it's again as always but especially here really really crucial that you have a very good pair of scissors because you need to cut really really close to the eye in order to be able to have the fly uh, look correct and good and as you can see now this is a relatively smart fly as you would call it because it has a relatively big head due to this but that's not going to be a problem at all because we're going to add um, add a fish uh, a, a flyman fish skull to to this fly uh, to to finish it off um, and so so it's going to cover the big head and and with that in mind it actually can be an advantage we're going to tie down the hackle here again uh, having a, a larger head is is basically a bit of an advantage then i'm going to turn the hackle and this just this this hackle here just gives this this fly the really 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 good looking good good look with this this red touch here it just it just complements the colors of the rest of the pattern here so so nicely i think uh, oh, i love these black laced <laughs> feathers so there we go and as you can see uh, i covered most of the head here with the uh, with the hackle so even if you do not want to use the uh, the the fish skull then then uh, this fly will still look really really good just like uh, just like that but the fish skull is 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 going to make it so much easier to add some eyes to this uh, and and i think the eyes can make a difference there we go also the eye uh, the fish skull is going to is going to help and make the fly stronger and more durable because it's going to protect the hackle from the trout's teeth there we go i just made the whip finish here and you can see some of the some of the uh, the hackle fibers are a bit uh, a bit rebellious but but that uh, that really doesn't matter because we're going to we're going to cover this with the uh, with the fish skull here like this Just moving it into place so before we we absolutely finish this fly off of course I'm gonna add some uh, some sabagat to make sure that my fish skull gonna stay in place and not too much hold the hackle back and then just basically cover the base here with with sabagat <laughs> and then uh, this is the size this is the size 3 and with the Flyman Fishing Company fish skull then the size 3 is a reference to the uh, is a reference to the uh, to the size of the eyes that will fit on this one but basically there you have it i'm just going to take some eyes now and i think some i have some that is uh, holo holo silver and orange and uh, the size of the fish mask, I didn't, I didn't finish that sentence, uh, refers to the size of eyes. So I'm going to have some 3 millimeter eyes here. And I'm going to place one inside this side. And that looks awesome. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And you can either use the Saba gap to make this uh, completely uh, secure. Or you can do what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take a small amount of uh, of UV glue and cover the eyes. I've almost used this uh, this Deer Creek one. Uh, this is almost used up, but just a small amount of a uh, UV glue to to really make the fly stronger and more durable. There we go. 
shine the light and then again on the other side oh, it won't stay there there we go just shine the UV light <laughs> thank you Rob it, it really is a nice fly it's you know it's it it looks good it looks really really good in the water it looks really really good in the box and uh, of course this also looks pretty awesome on Instagram not that that necessarily is 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 a criteria that is important but you know it, it doesn't it, it's okay that it does that as well I think my tail was a bit too long so I'm just gonna cut it a, a, a little and and there you go. It's also a fly that that it, it just it just performs. Hello, Otto. It just performs really really well. This one. Uh, I mean, um, I was fishing something like this, but even bigger on Iceland, and they were you know the trout were just hammering this. I caught some awesome awesome trout on Iceland on on a pattern very very similar to this one. Uh, it was just a bit lighter in the colors. The uh, the songer was. Um, was was a tan or a or a black barred or white, but otherwise it was it was basically the same as as this one, and and it was just it was just slaying and slaying and slaying, um and uh, and this pattern is something, uh, you know the the color scheme and the way of tying the sunga wing is something that's been around for ages, but but to add that small fish mask, uh, just just gives it that little extra, and um, it's a strong fly, it's a durable fly, it's it's fairly easy to tie, it looks amazing and. Uh, and it fishes even better, so. Um, Michael Knusen, regarding the flies for the gaula, please, again, please send me an email, daniel at nordicanglers.com, uh, and uh, and I will uh, I will I will send you some uh, some fly recommendations uh, for the gaula. But it sounds good that you've booked a, a, a trip uh, um, where where you can learn because uh, two handed fishing is is awesome. Yeah, Rob. Yeah, Rob. These um, these black laced these black laced capes and saddles are just absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna show off a few more of these because they are so freaking awesome. Take a look at that. That is just, it's just, they just look so freaking, freaking good. The pink one as well is, is just, they're, they're just, they're just awesome. Okay. So now it's time to change uh, the setup here. And, and I'm going to swap out to the other pattern that we're going to tie today, which is a small parachute done. And, um, <laughs> It's been quite a while since I've done some of the, those, so um, so I hope I'm not too rusty because I didn't have time to practice, and I think it's I think it's 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 five plus years since I last tied some some good uh, uh, mayfly duns, a parachute duns. So <laughs> yeah, I know lesser. I was just, you know, it, it, it was, it was, it was what I had. I didn't, I, I forgot to buy beer. Okay, so as I said, it's been quite a long time since I tied one of these. So, um, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it's, it's kind of like biking. It's not something that you will never ever forget. Uh, Daniel uh, Holmovor for, uh, for, for salmon flies, the. Um, the soft hackle uh, from the from a hen is the best. So you want you want a, you want a, a hen saddle, or you want a hen cape. But the hen feathers for the uh, for the for the front hackle is is the best way to go. If you're tying a a, a big summer fly, for instance, or or summer fly, and for the for the body of of that fly, the 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 rooster capes are bet best. But for for the finishing touch, thought I have one of. One or two I just did the other day that's going to be launched as a video soon. Yeah, something like this. This fly can probably eat <laughs> the other one. 
see something like this. This is a Pata cover that's going to be released uh, on YouTube. I did this uh, today. Um, you can see out here you want you want the front heckle of these salmon flies. You want them to be to be a bit more have a bit more structure and a bit more texture. And the and the hen the hen capes and the hen saddles are are perfect for this. This is an ordinary uh, black hen saddle, and behind this is is a is a brown uh, is a brown Brahma hen. So, basically, now let's yeah. <laughs> I should do that, Rob. But you know, um, the only reason, Rob, why I do not make this in size twenty-two is because if I mounted it size twenty-two, you would not be able to follow. You know. So, so I have a good and valid excuse, and I'm sticking to that one. I'm not going to tie anything uh, beneath, let's say, 14, 16 um, in, in these live streams, because too bad I can't do that because it will be too hard for, for you out there to see. So that's the only reason, and the only reason why I don't do that. <laughs> okay, here goes. Let's see. Let let's see how sharp I am. Um, when you're fishing with dry flies, and uh, and for a long time the the dry fly fishing was was actually the 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 kind of fishing that I did the most. Uh, it was kind of like the main thing that I did. It was it was basically what I what I would what I preferred to do all the time. So so uh, so if it wasn't dry fly. Then for me, at least for a long period of my life, then it wasn't really what I would have preferred to do. So, um, so I really have done a lot of this, and uh, and uh, and and some of the best dry fly fishing out there is is for the duns. This is a mayfly in Dönflu po Dansk, and uh, and um, what these are, there are some of the the insects that are more the most numerous in Denmark, and this particular one is called Betis rodani. In Latin, because uh, we don't have a Danish name for that. I think there is probably an old English name, something like medium blue winged olive, or uh, no, that's that's not correct. But but I but because we don't have any of the Danish words, then then for all the insects that there are in Denmark, I I use the uh, the Latin terms, and this one is the Betis rodani, which is one of the uh, one of the uh, the mayflies that are the most frequent because it's relatively resistant to uh, to pollution. So, so it's it, it has a high tolerance for all sorts of different stuff. So it's it's almost everywhere, and it has two different generations in in the year. So there is a, a pretty early one around late late uh, late April, uh, the beginning of May, which is the biggest one, and then there is a later a, a later one as well in the fall. So it's it's probably. <laughs> Um, so it's 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 probably the most numerous uh, mayfly we have in Denmark, and that's that's also why I'm gonna use that color combination to to show you um, to show you uh, a parachute hackle, and parachute hackles are I think the best way to tie uh, to tie mayflies in the in the done state. The done state is uh, and and the the the, the name duns. Is is basically because um, at this stage of the uh, of the mayfly's life, it's where it has been a nymph, and then it swims to the surface, and then it hatches, and then it sits on on the surface to dry its wings, and in that span of time, the trout will feed on it, um, and they will they will grab them quite readily because sometimes um, as as soon as the wings are dry, they will leave the surface, and the trout knows this. So that was a bit of an entomology lesson. From way back, I hope that's okay. That we have time to, you know, to uh, to geek out a bit. But um, now I'm gonna continue with the with the tying. So for this, we need um, we need, of course, a cape. Um, we've just gotten some of these new uh, Ewing Ewing products, and uh, I must say, this capes here, the the capes from Ewing are really, really good quality. They're not as good as, for instance, a bronze whiting, but a bronze whiting is also comparatively a lot, a lot more expensive. So, so these feathers are these Ewing Ewing Grade One uh, dry fly hackles are really, really nice, 
And also you can use a lot of the feathers here in the back of these if you buy a grizzly for instance for uh, for uh, for coastal flies and stuff like that. So you, you have a really really versatile product in these Ewing capes and they're less expensive than the than the whiting ones. They have they're in a different uh, price range. So nice nice products. And another good thing about Ewing is they uh, we whiting can be very difficult to to come by and uh, and Ewing is is more available at least to to us they are. So the first thing I'm gonna do is is I took some of the uh, some of the hackle feathers and then I I, I peeled off a, a few of the hackles here. The hook I'm using today is um, is the Chemco 103 BL, which in my opinion is the absolutely most beautiful hook uh, for dry flies there actually that there is ever made. And um, if you want to have a more sturdy hook that is not as beautiful but will well, if I were tying flies for, let's say, New Zealand or for Iceland, then I wouldn't use the 103 BL. I would be using the 900 BL because it's stronger. But, uh, but for the graylings and stuff like that, then the 103 is 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 nice and uh, and and it's just it's just it's just a beautiful beautiful hook. So the first thing you probably notice here is that my tail is actually a bit longer. Than what you would expect uh, in order for the uh, for the eye to have for, for this fly to look uh, perfectly uh, have the perfect properties um, uh, for the eye. But but what's important about this is the tail is a crucial element of this fly. So it's important that the tail is a bit longer than what you would expect. Maybe maybe about the same as as for from the from the bend here and all the way up to the eye. Because it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna. The tail is gonna help keep this fly afloat. So it's it's really important. <laughs> Thank you a lot, Trout King. So, um, basically, just use some hackle uh, hackle uh, fibers here for the tail. Then I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna do this with a twist. I'm not just gonna do. A, I'm just just not. I'm not just gonna do a parachute fly. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna add the front body with some foam and stuff like that. And I'm gonna mix it up a bit with adding a small rib, which we're gonna apply now. I'm taking a single strand of uh, of a uh, Mitch Crystal Flesh and Pearl because I want this to stand a bit out. I'm gonna take a full strand instead of one I just have laying around. So, taking a single strand of crystal pearl flesh, and the reason why I'm using this Mitch flesh is because it's the thinnest flesh out there. I'm just gonna tie this here, just to give this fly a bit of shine. Leaving that to the side, cutting away this, and now I need my dry fly dubbing. A long time ago, I was so fortunate that I, I came across these. These are dubbing dispensers with 28 rooms in them. And I have a, a bag of, uh, of dry fly dubbing in there. So these are just, these cubic ones are just awesome. But regretfully, they haven't been uh, produced for many, many years. So most of my dubbings are now stored in these, uh, these 12 rooms, room ones. But if you ever find, get can't come across something like this, then buy every one you can because these are awesome for travel. Yeah, I, I normally I don't like to 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 show off stuff that you know is not available anymore. But if if you ever see any of these, then definitely uh, buy them all. So now it's time to to make the body here, and my favorite uh, dry fly dubbing is the fly ride. So I have a lot of that in uh, in this box here. And and when you're tying dry flies, then a minimalistic way of doing it is absolutely the best way. So so what you want is you want as small as possible. You want as small as possible, and then you want to apply the dubbing here in very very small quantities, so you can you can build the body in the correct way. Um, another way of doing this is by using a, a full CDC feather. Um, that's also a nice option, or you can use some quills and and stuff like that. But but for the functionality, I I really like the uh, the fly ride dubbing. 
So as you can see, it was an insanely small amount of dubbing that I used here. And all, already I'm almost all the way, uh, halfway up the, the hook. So I know a bag of, of, of uh, fly ride is, is, fly ride is not the least expensive dubbing. But if you buy a bag of fly ride, I guarantee you, and, and you, for instance, the, 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 the right color for this Rodani is the color uh, 42. And if you buy a bag of that, um, I think I have a bag of this that is perhaps yeah, maybe 20 years old. And, and you, you almost can't see that I've taken uh, materials out of that bag. So, so <laughs> dry fly dubbing is something, uh, be careful what you buy because I guarantee you it's, it's probably going to stick with you unless, you know, your house burns down or something like that. Uh, it's it's going to stay with you for all the years to come. You, you simply, it's, it's not possible to use, use one up. <laughs> so get the right ones. So... Gonna add a bit more dubbing here, and I want this to gradually taper. There we go. So you can see now, um, it's 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 thin uh, towards the. Maybe I should take something so it's maybe it's easier to see if I do like this. You can see it's thin towards the tail, and then it becomes ever so slightly thicker up across the uh, up across the uh, the body. Then I take my um, my crystal Mitch flash, and I turn this, uh, and I don't drop it. I don't know how much the fish will actually see this flash here, but you know, I like to have it there. I think it's a nice addition to the fly. There we go. And so this part of the fly is fairly, fairly easy and uh, and fairly fairly straightforward. It's the rest of the fly now that is 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 the tricky part. So now we need to tie in the the wing of the fly, and for that you can use a lot of different things. You can use a CDC feather. You can use some deer hair. Um, I really like this polypropylene yarn, just poly yarn. Um, because it, it's easy to work with and it's, it's, it's just overall a really, really nice, uh, nice and easy to work with product. And again, I mean, a card like this, you have, uh, there's, there's probably material here to tie 8 million of these duns or something <laughs> along those lines. What you want is you do not want this wing to be too, too big. And because I'm going to double this, then it's important that the first one is not that big. So as you can see, I'm using a really, really small amount of material, but I also would like to have a bit of shine to the wing. So I'm going to take um, two, maybe three strands of this uh, crystal mirror flash here. And I'm going to put that on top of my wing. There we go. So I have added the crystal flash on top of my wing here. This will make the fly slightly easier for you to spot. Then I'm going to move the tying thread all the way down to the dubbing. And then I'm going to tie this down with two or three loose, uh, not firm turns. And by the way, I've swapped tying thread. So the tying thread I'm using now is a 14 O Vibus. And then I'm going to take the wing here and I'm going to hold it upright like this. And then I'm going to take my tying thread. <clears throat> and tie it around the wing, all the way around the ring, wing. And I'm going to do that in order to get the wing to be aligned and, and the wing to be pulled together with the strands of flesh in between. There we go. Okay, now comes one of now now it's time for one of the best tricks and one of the tricks that makes this this way of tying uh, the the parachute one. Uh, Heidi, the 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 thing that's inside the mylar is uh, is is not the same as as polypropylene, uh, as poly yarn. It's it's not the same. 
maybe you can use it, but it's it it doesn't have the same the right texture and uh, the white wing material. It's it's actually not white. It's 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 slightly gray and it's it's polypropylene yarn. It's poly yarn, polypropylene yarn. It's it's what I've always been using. But the next thing here is 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 where um, uh, the, this really stands out and makes this fly a bit unique and and a, and a, and a bit unique way of of tying a done. I'm gonna take a piece of foam here, and this piece of foam I have cut out already. Just gonna move my tying thread to this side of the uh, of the hook, and then I'm gonna take the foam here. And I'm gonna fold it up around the front of the fly, so it's gonna fold up around the fly, and then it's gonna have the wing in between. You see, like this. So I'm gonna fold it, and that's why I don't have dubbing in front of the wing, because in front of the wing is where I'm gonna have the the front of this fly tied from the foam here. Then I'm gonna tie on top of the foam. With the tying thread. So it's gonna go around the foam and around the wing. And now my wing is the, the foam are sticking out to each side, and the wing is just in the middle of this. <coughs> okay. There we have it. And now we're gonna do the parachute hackle. So <laughs> when I was looking for materials for um, for this fly to to be able to do this, I came across this one. Um, this one is is an old Hoffman, it's an old Hoffman cape, and uh, and this is I think this is perhaps twenty plus years old, perhaps twenty years old, and the quality of this, even though it's twenty years ago, is just still still just magnificent. And I know this is quite old, and it has been used for quite a lot of things up here. I, are part of the rules for uh, Holden poker. So uh, at some point, I, I you know, I, I, I was playing poker and with some rookie and and had to write down the rules for them. So you know, there's just all these strange, strange stories about materials that are this old, and I do not know what that is, but I, I probably wouldn't lick it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take the Ewing one. That 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 uh, that Hoffman Whiting one would also have been really nice for this, um, but they're just yeah they're just so hard to come by. Um, the thing about these hackles here is again as with the tail, you want a hackle. You want a hackle that is where the fibers are longer than what you would normally expect because the hackles are, are the main part that's gonna keep your fly afloat. So you want something that has a bit longer hackle and you do not want as many turns. You see a lot of, of Instagram photos and photos of these where you know the hackle is really really high. It's it's like there's they have turned a, a hackle maybe a hundred times or something like that. That's that's that looks good on Instagram but it doesn't fish well. So it's it's better to have lesser turns of the hackle, but having the hackle longer, because then the hackle will be able, the, the fly will be able to lean on the hackles. And it will keep your fly afloat way longer. It will look more natural, it will look more like the actual insect than if you know, you know, it looks so good on pictures, but it's not it's it's not flies that are tied for fishing that you see with you know the million turns of hackle it's flies that are tied for instagram and sometimes it flies tied for instagram by people who do not fish as much as they should be <laughs> so if you want to have this for instagram do that tie it 100 turns and make it look absolutely awesome but if you want a fly that fish as well less turns and then a broader a broader profile on the fly that's what what keeps the fly afloat. So I'm just gonna pick up the right hackle here. I think this one will do the trick. <laughs> You're right, Rob. I don't think it's beer either, though. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so you can see now, 
uh, I have the base here for my feather. It's gonna I'm gonna tie down the feather and I'm gonna tie down the feather here in between or in be in between the where, where the foam is. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut away or, or remove all the all the hackle fibers that I don't need. Uh, so so I have the hackle in the right length. I'm just gonna see uh, this is actually this is actually too long. <laughs> it can be too long as well, you know. I'm gonna find the perfect one. This one looks better. Yeah, this one is better. And what you want to do now is I have the feather ready now. Then I'm going to put it so it's horizontally. And perhaps it's easier for you to see if I do like this. And then I'm going to take my tying thread and I'm going to tie around the feather. And and make sure that the feather is is fastened on the foam like so I'm gonna cut away the heckle stem and then I'm gonna and and for this you're gonna need a really really good heckle plier I'm gonna take my heckle plier here Now I pulled off the heckle. Then I need to go back two turns. You want the heckle to have the, the shiny the shiny side upwards. There we go. I'm gonna take my heckle plier here. And then I'm going to turn the hackle. And every single time I turn the hackle, I make sure, and this is really, really important, I make sure that the next turn of the hackle is laying underneath the previous turn. So I take great care to turn the hackle all the time as close to the body all the way down. Then I pull on this, and then I take my thread over the heckle, underneath, again, underneath all the fibers, underneath, around, underneath, and still have my heckle down here, underneath, underneath. There we go. Now that's secured and fastened, cutting away the heckle here. I need my glasses. God damn it. I just got glasses this past week because my eyes were, were really, really red and swollen from from watching, uh, for, from uh, from doing a lot of stuff with the computer. So so I got a pair of glasses. Uh, yeah, I'm that old uh, for uh, for watching the screen because I have a small, I don't know what it's called in English, but there is a small uh, construction error in my in one of my eyes. But um, I can see now that because it's so long since I've been tying these small ones, then those glasses would probably be good for this as well. Oh my god. Yeah, you can do that Cat Denmark for the, uh, for the, uh, for the first fly we tied. You can use the, uh, the inner part of the, uh, of the mylar for instead of dubbing. You can do that as well. This actually is turning out really, really, really awesome. So what we want to do now is I take the foam here, I pull on the foam, and then I cut it off fairly close to the hackle. Do that on the other side as well without cutting off any of the, uh, any of the, uh, the hackle fibers. And what you get now is basically you have your wing 
it's 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 focused inside the two uh, the two um, the two layers of foam. You have a really nice looking uh, front part of the fly. You have your hackle secured, and uh, and also uh, very safe uh, in the foam here, and uh, and this makes a more durable fly. But it also gives you a higher riding fly, a fly that floats better because of the foam. So this way of tying a dun is really, really, in my opinion, the absolutely best one. And now comes another tricky part, because now we have to do a whip finish. And we have to do a whip finish underneath the hackle. So if you have a large whip finish, then that's really good for this one. I'm going to take my whip finish here. Again, move it as much as I can. I should have cut the wing before I started doing this. That first one was not good. I caught some of the hackles. Just going to cut the wing before I do this. So basically, make sure to cut the wing. And when you cut the wing, don't just cut it completely diagonal. You want this to, to kind of look like the real thing. And in order for, you, for that to, to be like the real thing, you want to taper it a bit. So it has, as you can see, it has a really steep tapering here and then a small tapering in the in the back. I think this wing here is still slightly too high. So I'm gonna There we go. There we have the uh, the wing there. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. As I said, this is it. It is a, a bit of a twist on the uh, on the old uh, on the old parachute fly, but this is uh, this is a twist that I learned from from one of the the most influential uh, fly tires I ever known, who was uh, uh, Morten Öland, and uh, and he showed me this. A bigger whip finish would have been better, but let's see how this works. I have caught some of the hackle fibers so before. And then of course when you pull on this uh, this will finish make sure There we go. I think I caught, nah, it doesn't look like it, I caught two or three fibers. <laughs> I caught two or three fibers of the of the hackle that I could not save. But basically, if you've done this right, you won't see any tying thread on the, uh, on the, uh, on the foam here. And you won't have any of these hackles that has been caught inside the thread. But... I mean, this is something you should you should go to and try out for yourself. This is without a doubt the best way of I've ever seen of doing a parachute hackle. Um, but it's also, um, I mean, it's easier just to do the parachute. Uh, but 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 this makes the fly float better. It makes the fly a lot more durable and a lot stronger. And it's just it's just a damn nice trick, you know. Um, and in my opinion, the 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 parachute hackles are without a doubt the best way of, of tying duns. You can do extended bodies, you can do all sorts of things, you can do no hackle duns and stuff like that, but the parachute, it really stands uh, magnificently on the water, it looks like the real thing, it's not that difficult to tie, and they just perform, they just fish very well. But the most crucial things are, use a slightly longer hackle than what you would expect, and use a slightly longer tail than what you would expect. And then, and then make it as minimalistic as possible. Use as few materials as possible uh, for when you're tying the, the body. These are small insects. These are, are very elegant and, and very magnificent and, and beautiful creatures. And, uh, and if you make something that is too bulky and, and too big, it will, it will simply not compare to the real thing. And the trout and, and grayling will often refuse. So I'm really, I must say, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. <laughs> I didn't have time to practice, as I said, so so, um, so I'm really pleased that, you know, I'm still going strong. And even though I, 
Uh, I sound so old. Even though I didn't have my glasses, I left them at home. Then, um, then I, st- I, I still got it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Henrik, um, this definitely will outfish a fratnik if if the fish are feeding on duns. Then, without a doubt, this will outfish that one. But I mean, um, if you're fishing, um, if you're fishing, let's say on grayling and stuff like that, most of those can be quite opportunistic, and you know, will just if if they're if they are you know, tuned into the surface feeding and you present something that just basically looks like food, most often the, the, the grayling will grab it. But I guarantee you there will be situations where they are so focused on the duns, if, if the concentration of duns is high enough, that they will they will not take anything else. And I like, personally, when, when dry fly fishing, then I like a lot to, uh, you know, to match the hatch. I think there is some satisfaction in catching exactly... Um, and catching the fish on exactly what they're feeding on that specific day. It's it's just I mean dry fly is dry fly, you know. So so if you catch a fish on dry fly, you catch you caught a fish on dry fly. But um but you know to to be out there to see a good fish, to spot that good fish and see it rise continuously and then and then figure out exactly what it's feeding on. You have that fly in your box, you add that to your leader, you make that one good cast and then the first time over, the fly drifts over the grayling or the trout, it grabs it and you set the hook. That right there is probably one of the most, the coolest feelings of, of fly fishing you can you can ever get. I, I just, man, I miss that stuff. We don't have as much dry fly fishing in Denmark as we used to. We've had a lot of predation on the uh, on the grayling and, and the and the brown trout from the uh, from the comorants. So uh, most places, the, the stock of, of these, uh, the, the resident fish has, has gone really down. We still have a lot, of, uh, a lot of sea trouts and sea trouts are booming. And so is salmon in, in Denmark. But, but the, the recent, uh, uh, the, the fish that, that, you know, stays permanently in, permanently in the rivers are, are, are at huge risk from the comorants, especially in the winters, especially in a winter like this now where the, um, where the lakes have frozen over. Then the comorants don't have anywhere to fish besides the rivers, and they will just they will just feed on all the graylings and uh, because graylings are basically, well, they're not the brightest of fish, you know, they're they're probably some of the most beautiful fish, but they will just you know be there right in the middle of the river on the sandy bottom and just be standing there, uh, so so they are they're not as aloof and not as as wary as as I think the brown trout is in general. So, so the grayling are, are easy prey for the comorants, unfortunately. Hello, Sigurdur. Well, people, I think that about sums it up for today. Damn, I miss dry fly fishing. You know, the foam beetles for the big sea trout is nice as well. But, um, but to have that, you know, that feeling of the really light, really light uh, leaders and, and the, 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 the eight and a half feet four weight or, or the eight feet three weight and, and just, you know, just moving across the, uh, the, the river valley and, and just looking for, for that fish to, to rise. Man, that's a good feeling. I miss that. I miss New Zealand as well. It's, it's been around... I think it's about 18 years since I went to New Zealand and and I miss that every year especially when you have so so much snow and stuff like this in Denmark I wish I could just you know pack up and go to New Zealand and fish these monster monster brown trout or even go to Norway in the summertime fishing all this the summer nights in uh, for grayling and and stuff that's also really really cool <laughs> well, the solution, Matthias, Matthias, the solution is time off flies and wait until it, it stops freezing. <laughs> At least that, that's the solution I stick to. <sighs> You're multitasking. Oh, that's that's good to hear, Sigurdur. But um, I think that was it for today. Um, it was nice. Uh, it was nice getting back to those uh, to those those dry flies, and um, I think I'm gonna tie a few more of these, uh, at least for the uh, for the regular fly tying video. 
uh, videos be because well basically I like them and uh, and uh, and if I if if I do a lot more of these then uh, uh, I probably will have to go fish them as well and I would like to do that so thank you a lot for for watching and um, remember there is a new stream again in 14 days uh, the same time and the same place um, I can't recall what we're gonna tie next time but in 14 days time there's gonna be a new one um, otherwise I'm gonna be posting some um, some new fly tying tutorials uh, uh, probably one tomorrow and uh, and then another one uh, next week and uh, if you haven't done so already uh, please subscribe to the channel that would mean a lot to me um, otherwise uh, thank you for watching and uh, yeah stay safe out there oh and of course swing by Nordic Anglers if ever you need any fly tying stuff we have not everything but pretty damn close <laughs> So, signing off. Thanks for now.